Universe, my name is Kati and welcome to my adventure. A couple weeks ago I posted a video where I read some pages from old diaries I used to keep back when I was in high school. Some of the entries I read to you were from the journal that I kept while I was in a mental hospital. I went ahead and asked you guys if you'd be interested in hearing the backstory to all that and you responded really well, so in this video I'm going to be telling you all about my experience in a mental hospital. Now just a little disclosure, I am going to be touching briefly on some topics like self-harm, suicide, depression, and I know that that can be triggering for some, so I'd just like to go ahead and put that out there now. If you think your mental health or well-being could be at risk from hearing about that stuff, please click off this video now. I totally understand. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I would never want my words to trigger something that could possibly cause harm to a person. Now that I got that out of the way, let's uh, get into the story. I was put into a mental hospital when I was 16 years old. It was my sophomore year of high school, and I I was dealing with a lot of self-harm and suicidal thoughts due to my depression. I was admitted, I believe, on a Tuesday. That Sunday before I had had a suicide attempt, I took a bunch of pills and luckily my mom called EMS. Monday I went to school and Tuesday I just wasn't feeling mentally up to it, so I told my mom I didn't feel good and she let me stay at home. My mom told me that she was going to take me to go see a doctor to talk about my depression. I was totally open to therapy, although it hadn't really been offered to me, so I was in some ways excited because I was hoping that maybe I could get some help. I remember the car ride there was super long. I kept asking my parents, like, where are we going? Why is this taking so long? We got there and these, I don't know, like metal gates kind of opened and we drove into the parking lot. I kept asking my parents, what is this place? Where did you take me? Who am I seeing? And my mom just kept telling me, oh, we're gonna go see a doctor. Oh, we're gonna go see a doctor. Oh, we're gonna go see a doctor. I kept thinking like, where's this doctor? Like, this doesn't look like a doctor's office. I didn't know that they had, you know, that we had just drove up into a mental hospital. In the waiting room, I remember there was a boy sitting across from me and he had like this giant duffel bag. In my head, I'm thinking like, that's weird. Who who has sleepovers with their therapist? Before you say it, I already know it was kind of stupid for me to be so naive, especially seeing what had happened just the other day, but mental health wasn't a huge topic in my house. It was kind of just a don't ask, don't tell thing. So I was just very uneducated on the subject. When the nurse called my family and I back, she brought us to a room that had this big table. She asked me a questionnaire with all the basic stuff like, do you want to hurt yourself? Do you want to kill yourself? Do you want to hurt others? Like all of that. And uh, next thing I know, she was putting a computer in front of my face. I looked at her and I was like, where, like, where's the doctor? And she was like, oh, you're going to Skype him. Okay. That's kind of weird. My parents would take me to a doctor if I'm just going to be Skyping with him, but whatever. The Skype call lasted maybe five minutes at most. The doctor was very quick and uh, next thing I knew it, the nurse was telling me I was being admitted. Now, of course my dumbass was like, <laughs> admitted to what? Then it finally clicked and a wave of a million different emotions rushed over me. The nurse asked me if I wanted a minute with my parents to say goodbye um, and I said no. I was furious with them. I'm not trying to paint my parents in a bad light or anything. I don't even want to get onto, you know, that topic. It's, it's part of the story, you know? I, I didn't know I was going to a hospital and it was honestly kind of traumatic in some ways. Uh, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what was going to happen. So it was, it was really scary. The lady brought me back and I started asking her a bunch of questions. What's going to happen? How long am I going to be here? Where are we going? What am I going to wear? Who are you going to put me with? You know, I was just going a million miles an hour. She wasn't really answering my questions. I honestly like don't really remember too much from my first day. I remember I cried a lot. Couldn't sleep for shit there. You know those mats that you used to like fold out um, in kindergarten during nap time? That's pretty much what the beds were made of, but harder. The sheets were like super thin. You didn't get a comforter or anything. You just got like a fitted sheet and then, you know, like a normal sheet. So on my second day, I started kind of making friends. I do have some stories that are more like crazy and funny that I'm, that I am going to share with you guys. But right now I'm sort of just trying to give you like a run through of my stay overall. They monitored every single meal we ate. Had to do like group therapy, physical therapy, all of, all of this stuff. You saw a counselor. After every single time you ate, you had to wait 20 minutes to use the bathroom. I saw a doctor who put me on some type of medicine. They monitored pretty much everything we did. The food honestly wasn't all that bad. I still I think it was eight days. They told me that I was gonna get out that next Tuesday. Thought that the entire week. I was looking forward to Tuesday. Um, I was so excited. And then on Tuesday, I went up to my doctor and I was like, hey, am I gonna get out? And she was like, no, you're actually getting out tomorrow. I later found out that that's something that they do a lot. It, I guess it's sort of to test to see if your mental health actually is where 
they want it to be. I don't understand how somebody's mental health can just magically heal in seven days. Not to start this tangent, but the mental health program in the United States is absolute bullshit. I remember at one point there was a nurse who literally laughed at one of the girls after telling a story about how she tried killing herself. I mean, granted, the way she tried was really fucking dumb, and it's kind of like one of those, like, dude, come on, how stupid are you? But at the same time, like, that's a nurse. That's the person the patient should feel comfortable and safe with, not the person they should worry about laughing at them. I think just in general, we all need to be a lot more aware and educated, but that's uh, that's my two cents on that one. My experience in a mental hospital wasn't very positive. After getting out of the mental hospital, I had a really hard time adjusting back to the real world. Anytime I was in the car with my parents, I would always get really, really paranoid. If we went down, you know, a road I wasn't familiar with or spent too long in the car, I would start freaking out thinking that they were going to take me back to another mental hospital without telling me again. It was super hard to maintain friendships and relationships because I always had that insecurity that they were only with me or, you know, in my life because I was the like, crazy depressed girl or whatever. Now that I kind of gave you my whole backstory of it, I want to talk about some of the funnier stories I have. I remember there was this one person. At first, I was absolutely petrified of him. He was like big and masculine looking. It was rumored that he had been in and out of just that facility like 13 times in the past year. He sort of played on the whole like, crazy card just to sort of like keep people from fucking with him, which I mean, good idea. <laughs> so I kept my distance for my first couple days. On the third day, my friend Maddie had left. So I was super lonely. Maddie was like the only person I really liked and actually enjoyed. Like there were other people that I talked to and stuff, but Maddie was the only like one that I actually clicked with. We were sitting at lunch and I have this really bad habit of saying things under my breath. Just when someone's being a dumbass, I always have to mutter something sarcastic and, and dickish under my breath. So during lunch that day, somebody had said or done something really stupid. I, of course, muttered my fucking <laughs> shit under my breath. And uh, I'm gonna call him Alex. Alex overheard me and kind of laughed. And I was like, oh, did you hear that? And he was like, yeah. So I guess that sort of like, I don't know, made him realize that I was like kind of an asshole like he was. So later that night at dinner after Maddie had left, I was sitting and kind of just keeping to myself. And Alex was like, hey, do you want to come sit with me? Yeah, like, okay, sure. Him and I ended up clicking just like that. And him and I spent the entirety of dinner just making each other laugh, making other people laugh, having a, a good time. It was the first time during my stay that I actually felt somewhat normal. So from that moment on, Alex and I were just inseparable. Everybody was like afraid of him, therefore they were afraid of me too because I hung out with him. It was like Mean Girls, but the crazy version. So like, mental girls. <laughs> so Alex and I just walked around like we fucking own the place. One night they let us pick a movie to watch. They had a bunch of DVDs and we had seen the DVD Norbit. Alex and I were like, oh my god, we love this movie, let's watch that. And then it became like a routine. <laughs> Anytime the TV was on, Norbit was playing. And nobody would ever argue with us because everyone was afraid of Alex. Now remember how I said earlier that Alex would really play into the whole like crazy role? There was one time where a girl had just gotten there, I think the night before. So she didn't know Alex and I were like top dogs. Like I feel so bad for telling this story. But Something Alex, something Alex used to do to get people to like fuck off was bark at them. I don't know why that was his go-to, but anytime someone would try having a conversation with him that he didn't want to be a part of or like ask him something that he didn't want to do, he would just start barking like a dog. Not like a straight up like like insane. So this poor girl, like it's her first full day. She walks up to us and she's like, I just got here last night and it's already the second time we've watched Norbit. Why don't you watch something that everybody else picks? And I go, I feel so bad telling this story. I go, Alex, sick him. And Alex just starts barking at her viciously. And this poor girl like runs to the other room. And I swear to God, she did not say one word for like the rest of my stay. I feel so bad saying it out loud now, but like it's so 
fucking stupid. Anytime Alex felt threatened or annoyed or just uncomfortable, he would just start <laughs> to that girl. If you're out there somehow watching this fucking video, I'm sorry I made my friend bark at you. Those are words I never thought I would have to say. By the way, I do still talk to him every now and then. I actually messaged him the other day and asked him if he'd be willing to come on camera and do a video with me talking about both of our experiences, telling like the full stories of, you know, the things I'm telling you now, and he did say yes, so maybe one day that video can actually happen. Here's to hoping. Give this video a thumbs up if you would be interested in seeing Alex and I reunite and tell our story. Yeah, I don't know. Alex Alex was like, I mean, to this day, is like one of my favorite people on the planet. The amount of like shit we got into, it probably, it probably honestly doesn't even seem that funny now that I'm like retelling it, but I'm just so happy I met somebody like Alex in there. If it weren't for him, I definitely would have lost my shit completely. So if you watch the video where I'm reading my old journal, I'll put the link in the description if you want to go check it out, but at one point I mentioned my insane roommate from the mental hospital. I think I gave her the name Brit. So Brit came in, I think it was my fourth night there. Three in the morning, the fucking lights come on and a nurse walks in with Brit behind her. This is your new roommate, blah, 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 whatever, bye, and then leaves. So I'm like, so she kind of introduces herself to me and I was like, oh yeah, they keep the light in the hallway on, it's really obnoxious. And she was like, oh, I know, this isn't my first time here. And I was like, well, oh shit, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were a fucking VIP member. She was just like, I don't know, like kind of bitchy to me in a way. Like, yeah, I've been here more times than you. And I'm like, yeah, that's not something to brag about. So like one bed was on this side and the other bed was on this side. We each had lights above them. She kept hers on and I was like, oh, like, do you sleep with the lights? on and she was like nah I'm not going to sleep yet I'm gonna draw so I'm just like all right for sure I'm like all right I can just go to sleep it's fine I close my eyes and I start to relax and all of a sudden I fucking hear chica, 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 coming from her, her fucking notepad I'm not even exaggerating or being dramatic like this bitch was like fucking chiseling into her journal right I've never heard somebody draw so violently or loudly in my entire goddamn life okay hour passes and she finally decides to turn off her light and go to sleep. I'm like, this is my time. 30 seconds later, I kid you not, I hear <sighs> Before she went to sleep, she did say, I kinda snore, so if I end up waking you up, just wake me up and I'll stop. Bitch, kinda! You could've fucking caused an earthquake in Uganda with that fucking noise. All right, you know, everybody snores. Get up out of my bed and I'm like, hey, Brit, you know, like try waking her up. This bitch straight up is like, fuck off, like in her sleep. I'm like, cool, <laughs> that worked real well. And so I'm like, Brit, come on, get up, you're snoring, it's really loud, I can't go to sleep. And she just completely ignores it. So I decided to just go like, right on the top of her forehead. Still didn't wake up. Finally, I got her to wake up. She was quiet enough for me to finally fall back asleep and I slept through the night. The next night comes. I get all cozied up in my bed. Britt starts showing me the anime porn she drew last night. Hentai, is that what it's called? I go to sleep. I'm out for maybe five minutes and all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> Britt, you're snoring. Britt, please be quiet. Nothing. Try the slapping on the forehead technique again. Nothing. I'm just gonna block it out. I grab one of my books. I put it on my ear. I grab my pillow. I put it on the other ear. I can still fucking hear her. <laughs> There's no way I'm actually getting up from under my covers again. I need to just like throw something at her. So I look over my bed and I see this ball fucking punt it. Hits her head, doesn't wake her up. Plan B didn't work, so I look on the other side of my bed and all that's fucking there are my chanclas. <laughs> I grab one of my shoes and I threw it at her. She kind of moved, didn't stop the snoring. I grab the last shoe, hold it in my hand for a second, close my eyes and make a wish. Throw it, probably like the hardest I've ever thrown anything in my entire life. <laughs> and she jolts away. And so instantly I like pull the covers over my head and I'm like, <sighs> She was quiet for the rest of the night. I remember the next morning too, she was like, hey, um, your shoes were on my side of the room this morning. Did you like throw them at me or something? And I was like, no, like, wow, that's, that's really weird. Maybe, maybe one of us was sleepwalking or something. I have stories for days that I could tell, but I think that's all I'm going to share in this video. One day, if I am able to meet up and film with Alex, you guys can meet him and see what a fucking awesome person he is. 
is and we can tell the stories together but for now you're just gonna have to settle for me yes I dealt with self-harm and suicidal thoughts that wasn't the first or the last time I had tried killing myself or anything but today I am doing incredibly good I haven't hurt myself in years I haven't tried killing myself in years I'd like to say I'm a uh, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good if you're dealing with something as serious as suicidal thoughts or self-harm or you're just really really depressed and feel alone please know that it is 100% okay to reach out reach out to a parent a teacher a friend a family member somebody you feel like you can trust and if you don't have anybody like that reach out to me I'm always here my DMs are always open I know exactly what it's like to feel like the world is against you but I can promise you it's not to those of you who have conquered suicidal thoughts or self-harm congratulations you're doing amazing and to those of you who are still struggling with it you're doing amazing as well, and you will get through it eventually. It's not always gonna be this way. I hope you enjoyed hearing my story and kind of seeing a different side of me. If you'd like to hear more stories from my past, let me know in the comments below, because I definitely have quite a few crazy ones. And if you'd like to hear more about my mental health journey and how I got to the places that I am, let me know also in the comments below. If you'd like to follow my journey, please click the subscribe button, and if you'd like to follow my other adventures, I'll put my social media links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Hug your friend, hug your pet, and until my next video, remember that the universe is on your side. Bye.